Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are in the world. My name is Hendrik Witt. Um, I'm Chief Product Officer of TeamViewer, and I'm going to talk to you the next couple of minutes around kind of how to navigate the journey to digitalize industrial workplaces and how augmented reality technology can be used to upskill your frontline workforce. But before we dive straight in into AR itself, let's first reflect a little bit what the current industrial workplace challenge is. And for me personally, it's more about the right side of that slide. It's, it's more about the people. It's more about the faces you look into um, when you are around on the shop floor. You basically see, see faces a little bit lost, disappointed. And the reason is predominantly because processes and manufacturing processes and everything is becoming more and more complex. But people are just lacking, you know, the, the right tools at hand in order to do their jobs um, better. And that is also why 80% of the frontline workforce actually believe they don't have the right tools at hand um, and basically feel that, you know, digitalization in enterprises is happening all over the place except for on the shop floor. And that is basically why they, they almost feel they are left behind. But we all know kind of that what needs to be done in order to transform into an industrial digitalized workplace, because what we need to do is we need to change the way we work or the, the way we work tomorrow um, today, um, human processes are dominated, obviously, by a lot of learning and training and memorizing the tasks that need to be done, which in turn also results in, in, in somewhat a variance of, of task performance between people, because different people, different situations, different environments, just different process outcomes. And, and, and people can still today rarely tap into um, information. Most information they can tap into is typically not um, up to date, outdated, all that things. But probably the most important aspect is tribal knowledge, right? With an, with an aging society, um, tribal knowledge really is trapped into, into individual persons. And what we need to do is with digitalization, we need to shift this and make information accessible wherever you are for, for frontline workers and also allow not just to consume information, but actually also to provide information to systems. Um, and, and that all of that basically in real time so that people in best case can actually work together um, with machines, with the environment they are in. Um, that's probably the biggest challenge when we're going into the digitalization journey and for me, what's important when we're talking about digitalization is really how do we actually bring physical and digital world all together? Um, I think digitalization on shop floors is predominantly happening around the industrial Internet of Things, meaning basically connecting machines um, to the Internet, equipping them with sensors, um, you know, retrieving data, doing machine analytics, trying to predict um, certain situations ahead of the time before they actually occur. Um, that's all good. But what we also need is, we also somewhat need, from my perspective, to spin up an internet of humans. So connect the frontline workforce and also allow them to tap into digital information, um, allow them to leverage the information coming from sensors so that they can actually literally work hand in hand with machines, robots on the shop floor, because only by, by the two worlds, the Internet of Things and the Internet of Humans coming together, I believe only by that we can really achieve a true end-to-end -end digitalization experience um, happening on the shop floor. But how can we actually make that work? How can we build the Internet of Humans and what's needed? And, and I think we all know, given this is EW2S, wearable computing, and in particular smart glasses, 
can be actually a, a quite good, if not perfect solution in order to reach that goal because they allow you to tap into digital information. They even further, because of you know, the mounting kind of on your head, they allow you to um, still keep your hands free in order to do your physical jobs in the real world environment. And, and they can also, at least in some instances, help make process execution way more ergonomic because people don't have to necessarily wear around um, equipment, IT equipment, tools, all that things, because everything is kind of worn on body. So that's, that's why wearable computing is really a good solution in order to spin up the internet of humans. And we're seeing already today a lot of enterprises leveraging um, wearable computing and AR technology across various different industries and achieving tangible business benefits. Um, for example, think about DHL deploying wearables in AR in the logistics arena um, and achieving significantly better process performance up to 15%, which is massive for the logistics space. Um, a big, big, big step forward in terms of digitalization, thanks to wearable computing technology. Or Coca-Cola being able to reduce error rates, basically increasing quality, but almost up to 100%. Or Airbus, completely different industry and also completely different use cases they, they look into, inspection type of procedures, um, they, they can now do with wearables, they can now do 30% faster um, inspections. And for me, probably the most important aspect is the last, which is Echo Offend achieving kind of a significantly high employee happiness just by the fact that they give adequate technology and equipment to their workers so that they can do their jobs better and perceive their work now finally really fun. That's for me the super powerful benefit that enterprises can derive from wearables. But let's dig a little bit deeper in one of the case studies and I picked Coca-Cola for the day because it's a nice example how they kind of embraced wearable computing for their organization. Coca-Cola started off in the logistics space. They had the issues, they couldn't um, really reach quality um, quality targets in, in, in terms of process accuracy. And they deployed smart glasses, they giving them immediate hands-free operations, a fully voice-driven system, obviously um, with having multiple nationals working for them, it has to be in multiple languages, all that. And they, they were quite successful with that and people were super happy. So they, they thought about if, if this can help us so much in the logistics space. Isn't there more places in our organization where that piece of technology can actually work? And there was. For example, they moved on into the training space, into the inspection space, where they, where they found that when they deploy wearable computing in the sense of step-by-step -step instructions, training procedures, stuff like that, they could reduce or they could make training procedures 30% faster and not only could they use the, the technology in the actual training, but also in the real execution of inspection tasks. Um, so they could tap into um, digital documentation. But in addition, um, they also had automatically generated audit logs now. So they could exactly see how the maintenance procedures were performed, uh, which was a big plus for them in addition. They didn't stop. They thought about other areas and they found a very classical element, which was remote support. The classical you see what I see type of an um, use case with smart glasses, because in particular during the pandemic, obviously people couldn't travel, and but still machines were going down from time to time. And by using um, instant AR support solutions, they could really cut downtime of their machines in in the production plants really into half which is which is a significant improvement um, in terms of the overall performance of the organization 
So that is a great example of how AR technology can actually change the way we work. And that for me is also um, straight into what, what we are team viewer are trying to achieve or the mission we're striving for, which is creating a world that works better. And we truly believe that the world that I've just shown um, with augmented reality is the new reality when it comes to business operations. Um, and I wanna take the opportunity here at EWTS to tell you a little bit more about TeamViewer because most of you might know TeamViewer, but you probably now think, yeah, TeamViewer, isn't that the guys that do IT support? So when, I, when my mom has a problem, I can remote into her computer and help fix, fix that problem? Yes, that's TeamViewer. But TeamViewer is actually no longer just IT support. We started off in 2005, so our company has grown to the age of 16 years by now. It's, it's a significant growth story. It's, it's close to uh, 1,500 people right now, half a billion in, in revenue, um, offices across the world. And, but I wanna not talk so much about our IT support history, but wanna make you aware that we already in 2018 also started on our AR journey by basically launching our first augmented reality product, which was called Team Your Pilot. And Team Your Pilot was basically using our remote support solutions, bringing it onto mobile phones and adding augmented reality um, information on top of it so that people could use their phones in order to support um, from a remote side. So, and since then, AR was a core pillar of the team viewer strategy going forward, going or not going away, but extending kind of not only having IT solutions, but truly going into the shop floor operations. And that's why also early 2020, you might have seen that, that we've been investing significantly into our AR strategy and our AR product portfolio and doing a lot of acquisitions in that space. We started off with the Ubimax acquisition, quite well-known brand in, in the AR space. Um, we added on this year, early this year, um, Upskill, um, also very well-known in that space, and another third acquisition in that space with Copic, smaller business, but truly in the area of mixed reality. So, and what we what we what we try to build here and what we've built and succeeded in building actually with the acquisitions and with the own AR capabilities of TeamWorld, we now have assembled the leading AR software platform with all that thing. So all the capabilities of the three acquisitions plus our own team viewer strengths in the AR space, but also beyond the AR space. We now build into one AR platform so that we can really be the go-to partner for you. And what that now means is that we truly serve you as customers along the entire value chain. And by that, I obviously mean from an AR's perspective, you know, the supply chain area, the manufacturing area, the field service or in general service area. But since TeamViewer's product portfolio is much broader, we even support you further, not to speak about obviously IT support, customer support, there are solutions for customer engagement, asset monitoring and management, and so on and so on. So TeamViewer nowadays can really become your partner of choice, not only for the AR piece, with a very strong offering in AR obviously, but you can also use our adjacent products out of one integrated team viewer platform. And what we bring in terms of AR to the table is kind of our team viewer frontline product line, which comes to, and ships with four core solutions, the XPIC solutions in the logistics space, XMake for all sorts of assembly line and quality assurance, um, use cases, X-Inspect for maintenance and field service, 
And last but not least, the classical remote support scenario we serve with our Exorcist solution. That's the solutions that our frontline workers will see and perceive most of the time. You can think of it almost like a Microsoft Office type of an experience, but for the frontline worker. But the platform itself, and in particular, thanks to all the acquisitions and the technological capability we brought on board with those acquisitions, we now have a very, very powerful tool set of platform tools coming from, for example, the, acqu uh, the acquisition of Upskill, we now have very strong low-code application development capabilities for the ones that have certain IT expertise. TeamViewer and Ubimax were back the days already very strong in a no-code approach with drag-and-drop editors more geared towards business side users not having IT knowledge. And on the viscopic side, we're no now also adding um, CAD modeling and 3D workflow authoring capabilities for the ones that are coming more from the angle of CAD. So it's, as you can see, it's a true platform, a true and complete offering that we're bringing to the table. The key elements of that one platform strategy are obviously, you know, we bring all sorts of innovations, obviously around AR, well computing, and obviously not to forget also a lot of artificial intelligence, um, data analytics goes into the platform. Um, we said we support users of all kinds, not only the ones that are IT experts can use our technology in order to implement AR processes. No, we also go with the business side users that have no IT expertise at all, and still they will be able with Frontline to build AR applications that drive business value. All solutions are geared really along the entire value chain, so we're not stopping any, anymore at any point in time. It's not just a single virtual, uh, vertical solution. It's really going horizontal across the various different value chain elements. And of course, last but not least, it's a truly device agnostic platform you can go with all sorts of relevant monocular smart glasses, binocular smart glasses, mixed reality type of devices, but you can also obviously go with mobile phones and tablet PCs if that fits you better. So by the end of the day, what TeamViewer Frontline allows you to do is really upskilling your frontline workforce with augmented and mixed reality technology so that you could use TeamViewer Frontline on your journey towards a digital workplace on the shop floor and also to not only spin up your internet of humans, but thanks to a lot of functionality in Frontline, you will be able to easily also connect with um, your IoT environments. So, Given the format, there is no Q&A, unfortunately. So I'm more than happy if you reach out to me directly, if you have any questions or check out your, our website. The most important thing for me is let's connect and let's also try and stay connected, even though these events are all virtual. Thanks for your attention and hopefully seeing you soon in person.